Unanswered questions and unsolved mysteries can give us a thrilling shiver to think about. Maybe we should have a much more acute sense of awe and wonder when it comes to observing and pondering the universe surrounding us. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three interesting discoveries that will expand your appreciation for the puzzles of our world and beyond. Jupiter's outermost moon is considered lost. Often when we think of space discoveries, our brains convince us that only more recent 20th and 21st century missions are significant. But over 400 years ago, the largest four moons of Jupiter, Io, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto were spotted. Since then, Jupiter's known moon count has grown to 80. That is a lot of moons to monitor. This is maybe why it was possible for one of Jupiter's outermost moons to go missing. S2003J10 was observed for a few months before it disappeared from its orbital path. It was a retrograde moon, meaning it orbited in the opposite direction of its mother planet Jupiter on the Kami path. It was first spotted by a group of astronomers at the University of Hawaii. Strangely enough, it has not made an appearance since its discovery and is considered the only lost moon of Jupiter right now. Other moons have gone off the radar but have eventually been found again. In 2000, the moon S2000J11 was discovered and watched for about a month when it disappeared from the orbit path it was on and has become a missing moon case for a decade. Theories popped up about the mystery. It was thought that a visible streak of dust around Jupiter in 2006 was the result of S2000J11 colliding with another moon orbiting the largest planet in our solar system. People criticized the discovery saying it was not real and scientists had made a mistake in their observations. This was debunked in 2010 and 2011 when Scott S. Shepard obtained images of S2000 through the Magellan Telescope. The larger moons in this orbit are 20 to 150 kilometers, whereas S2000J11 is only a few kilometers in size. The disappearance of this moon was due to the fact that it was in a prograde orbit close to Jupiter, making it hard to distinguish among the many retrograde orbits further away from the planet. S2000J11 will eventually receive an official name relating to either the Roman god Jupiter or the Greek god Zeus. Where is the edge of the universe? Defining the edge of the universe opens up a whole bunch of other questions to ask, and the rabbit trail does not necessarily end with a definitive answer. If we focus on the observable universe, we can see that it is flat and consistent. The orderliness of the universe indicates that galaxies are laid out pretty evenly across space. This means that there is not a curvature to the universe, and it does not circle around and reconnect with itself. Logically, we can guess that there is some sort of edge somewhere because flat things must end. The tricky thing to wrap one's head around is that because of the uniformity of the universe, we can assume that our section of the universe is not unique from the rest of the universe. So, there are infinite sections of the universe similar in structure to ours. This means that the edge of the universe is in time but not space. The Big Bang happened 13.8 billion years ago, and we more or less see the universe and all of its galaxies as it looked at that time. As the further ahead we look, the further back we can see. There is always going to be something just beyond the edge. It's a bit like counting. Some will say that infinity is the highest number, and others will argue that there is infinity plus one. Just beyond the edge, there is existence. Whether it is time or an abyss of darkness, something lays beyond the edge and defies the existence of a universe edge. Not only that, but the universe is dynamic, constantly expanding into already existing space. This is further evidence that there is no actual edge to the universe. If the question changes and we ask, where is the edge of the observable universe? If the observable universe is the same value and measured in all different directions, then from Earth there is a horizon to the universe, and just like when we travel by sea and we cannot see beyond the horizon, 
we know there is more ocean on the other side of what is visible. Hexham Head In 1971, two brothers, Leslie, aged 8, and Colin, aged 11, lived at 3 Reed Avenue in Hexham, England, and were digging outdoors in their family's back garden. For a child, digging can be a great source of entertainment, and it's instantly up-leveled when an interesting discovery is made. In the holes the boys were creating, they spotted two round objects, each about the size of a small apple. They appeared to be some sort of carved head. It is undetermined what the heads were actually made of, but during that time it was believed that they were carved from some sort of stone. The Robson brothers were eager to show their parents what they had found. The precious new possessions were left on the main floor of the Robson house, and the family headed upstairs to bed for the night. Little did they know something very out of the ordinary was about to happen. The family members found that the heads had moved when they checked on them in the morning. This was an odd thing, but not too alarming. Later on, however, it seems that one of the boys had their hair pulled by an invisible being. There was broken glass found in the beds of the Robson sisters. There was a glowing outside coming from the areas where the heads were extracted from the ground. An especially terrifying occurrence happened in the middle of the night. The mother of the family saw a half-man, half-goat beast inside of the house. She watched, frozen with fear. The neighbours of the Robsons also reported seeing a mysterious animal in their home. Half-man, half-sheep. Is it possible it could have been the same creature? Dr. Anne Ross, an expert in Celtic artefacts, was given the opportunity to study the heads. While the heads were under her care, in her home, Dr. Ross reported that she woke up one morning and saw a part wolf, part man individual leaving the room. She was able to track it down the stairs and watch it head toward the kitchen when it disappeared out of sight. Her daughter also gives an account of seeing something that looked like a dark werewolf on the stairs. It leapt over the banister and into the hallway before it dematerialized. Once the heads left the homes they were in, the scary incident stopped. The last known location of the Hexham Heads was at Southampton University in 1978. They have since been lost and their whereabouts are unknown. Lost moons, haunted heads and the mystery of where is the edge of the universe continue to fascinate us as a human race. It's unsettling for our brains to not have all the answers and yet here we are stuck in a state of wondering. But what do you make of these discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.